In this video, we're going to go through the mechanism of the Horner-Wadsworth uh, Emmons reaction. So I have uh, the basic Horner-Wadsworth Emmons reaction shown here. We're starting with a phosphonate ester, and we're going to treat it first with a strong base to deprotonate it. And then we're going to treat it with an aldehyde or a ketone. In this case, I chose an aldehyde. The product of that is going to be uh, an alkene and this uh, phosphonium salt. That, that'll be a byproduct of the reaction. All right, so let's um, just try to highlight where these pieces come from. If I can, um, in red, I'll just go over uh, this piece right here. And that'll wind up as being this part of the of the reaction, um, not including the the carbon here. Obviously, that carbon I'll draw in blue uh, comes from uh, that piece right here, and it connects onto the ester. All right, so let's go through the mechanism. All right, so the base, well, what the base is doing in this reaction. Uh, it's deprotonating. I have an acidic proton that's between the two electron withdrawing groups. So T butoxide, I'll redraw that again here, will attack and deprotonate to give me the anion alpha to the ester and this phosphonate. And what I wind up with is T butanol as the byproduct. And I'll wind up with this uh, intermediate. Now this, you can kind of think about this as the illid from the Wittig reaction. This is going to be our nucleophile, which is going to attack the carbonyl. So I'll draw in red. I'll draw the aldehyde. And what is going to happen is this is going to attack at the carbon. Remember, it's polar. Uh, it's an electrophile at the carbon, and the electrons will come up onto the oxygen. What that's going to give us is this intermediate. And in red, we'll get O minus. All right. So phosphorus and oxygen. Uh, are going to form a very strong bond in this. And what we're going to get is attack of this oxygen onto the phosphorus, kicking the electrons up onto the oxygen there. So what that does is it forms a four-membered ring, just like it does in the Wittig reaction. And what we're going to get from that, I'm going to stop using colors now and just show the four-membered ring. So I'll have the phosphorus, O minus, O ethyl, O ethyl. I'm just drawing those out now uh, just to get them out of the way. And then uh, connected and we've actually formed a four membrane ring. The ester is gonna be here. And the ethyl part of the uh, aldehyde is gonna be there. All right. And then this is going to fall apart. I'm going to wind up making the phosphorus double bond oxygen by moving these electrons here and these electrons here. And what that does is it generates the trans double bond, uh, as I've shown here, and this uh, phosphonium salt as the byproduct. All right. So how do I generate uh, these phosphonate esters? It turns out that that's its own reaction unto itself. So let's use a new slide. So I'll just draw this uh, as ethyl O2. Again, these are all different ways that you could draw the ester part of the phosphonate uh, ester. So just something like this, let's say. I want to make this. Um, we're going to get this from an alkyl halide and another phosphorus compound, kind of like we do in the, uh, in the Wittig reaction. So if I have this triethoxyphosphine and this bromide, the 
first step of this reaction when I mix these two together. And again, this, is, this reaction has its name. This is called the Arbutsov reaction. Arbutsov reaction. So again, this is just an SN2 displacement on a very specific uh, example. So the SN2 displacement winds up giving me uh, this salt. I'm going to have a plus charge on the phosphorus. I'm going to just draw these ethoxy groups out on the phosphorus. You'll see why in a second. Okay. And the bromide ion. Right. And that bromide ion can now attack one of the ethoxy groups at the carbon. So again, this is an SN2 displacement of the bromide. This is going to be another SN2 displacement, and the group that I'm going to kick out is this phosphonate salt. And what I get from that, I wind up getting uh, a double bond phosphorus and the O ethoxies here. Again, I'm just drawing them out. And as a byproduct, I'm going to get ethyl bromide as a byproduct from that reaction. So this is how we make uh, the phosphonate esters uh, using an Arbutsov reaction.